this Raw was awesome for 90 minutes. Then they reverted back to form. They reverted back to last week's worst Raw of all time. So this Raw was half awesome, half the worst Raw of all time. Metal. Before we start this Raw review, uh, some of you might have seen on Facebook that we announced that we were going to make two videos tonight, which is work rate. But the second half of Raw almost put us to sleep and we're tired now, so we're going to do that one tomorrow in the evening, late afternoon, you know. But that doesn't affect you because we weren't going to upload it tonight anyway. There you go. That's work. That's work rate. And for those of you that haven't joined the Facebook Join the conversation on Facebook, Taz. We have a lot of fun during our thread. Another thousand plus comments tonight. Another meme contest, for which there were two winners. So I'm going to put those up here. Alright, and now without further ado... Oh, let's start raw review. The show started off with the authority. Okay. But they must have seen our videos because we were saying how we don't even know who's in the authority. They brought the entire stable out this time. So there. Now we know who's in the stable. It's very it's very clear now. Uh, Triple H was whoring out the network so much. 995 the game. How do you not know what the price is? Oh no. <laughs> they really set it 80 million. It became a thing in the it's 999. I guess they got to say it more. He was saying really he said it so much that he would build up to it. He's like, you can watch it on the network, which is... And then the crowd would fill in $9.99 a month. Only Triple H can get the crowd doing that. I approved of this network whoring. It was really funny. But then the show progressed. <laughs> and the, the duty of network whoring got passed on to the Three Stooges. Alheimer, Michael Goal, and Uncle Paul. And it wasn't funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Stephanie McMahon was there. Her tits were still covered. You'll never see Stephanie McMahon's tits again. That was... They were rotting and sagging. She'll make sure you never see them. If, if there was a definition for bolted-on tits, they're Stephanie's. Massive. Triple H just talking about how great Summerfest is going to be. And so much network whoring was happening. And it was announced that there's going to be a Beat the Clock Challenge and the Clip Dick Calamity Episode 88 will air tonight. And then Roman Reigns showed up, and he said, he said, Randy Orton, I'm gonna punch you. And then Randy Orton said, no, I'm gonna punch you. And then Triple H said, no, you're not gonna punch him. Kane's gonna punch him in a last man standing match up next. And that match happened. And, uh... This match was awesome! It was very good. It was an awesome match! Great match for a Raw! I'd be satisfied if this was like a mid-card match at a pay-per-view, actually. It was pretty darn it's good. some guy on Wrestling Forum with his, literally, his signature was, yes, I'm a brony, no, it's not a big deal, was talking about how bad this match was. Like, we give a shit about your opinion, pony fag. Yeah, you deserve every amount of bullying that you get. No, we don't condone bullying. We don't condone bullying at all, or wife beating for that matter. Or shaming gay people, women, or, you know, people who look like goats. That being said, babies. when you freaking make it known that you are a male and you watch My Little Pony, your opinion on professional wrestling goes out the window. Yes, it does. Uh, th this match had a kendo stick moment in it that actually looked kind of cool. I don't know. They didn't drag it on for 25 minutes and insisted that... Oh, look out, 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 Kane! Oh, look out, look out! Reigns motioned for the Superman punch and the crowd exploded. Oh, look out, look out, Reigns! Because he's the most old hey, kid me. of all time. There was blood in this match. There were weapon shots. It was cool. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! Roman Reigns got choke slammed through a table. Oh yeah, yeah. But he made it up for the nine count. And Reigns. And then he did something cool somewhere. The spear. The end. Well, yeah, that was. Yeah. He DDT'd him onto a chair. That was what it was. And then he speared him, and he won the last oh, man standing match. Reigns will move that. And uh, it was cool. I enjoyed this match. Hardcore action! We fight on Monday night, Smaggle! Yeah, look out, look out! Blood and weapons on Monday night. Look out! I enjoyed this match thoroughly. Roman Reigns is so far beyond over, it's not even funny. He went in the corner and just, like, motioned for the Superman punch, and the crowd exploded like you wouldn't imagine. Oh, look out, look out! Can my whole say anything else? <laughs> He can! He can say, Hey, security in the back of the head! Oh, you gotta kid me! That's the only oh, move. Oh, Reigns, look out! Oh, look out! 
So, um, they show a pre-shot little promo off of Lesnar. He's talking about how he loves to punch people. And then they cut to Cena, and he's like, I don't want to talk about my accomplishments in Asian hours. Look ahead to all the pussy I'm going to get. He said that. I was shocked. And then Lesnar, this, this little video package of them talking went on for like 20 minutes, but it was very entertaining, and it ended with Lesnar saying, The greatest line of all time. I'm going to leave him in a pile of blood, urine, and vomit. Oh, man. Blood, urine, and vomit for $9.99 a month. That's not PG, Chaz. No doubt about it, Cole. $9.99 a month for blood, urine, and vomit. Hashtag blood, urine, and Those vomit. Those massive deltoids and traps of Lesnar tearing Cena apart. It's going to be a rocket buster at SummerSlam. I get how there can be blood. I get how there can be vomit. Why is he going to make Cena pee? <laughs> I love it when Brock Lesnar talks. It's just cute. It's charming. It's like he's trying. It's adorable. Okay, so we get more network whoring after that, and it's not funny anymore. It's already ruined. You should buy the network! Jerry Lawler like, begs you to buy it. Please! It's a great value! Buy the network! Please! So, JR's theme hits... And Sandow came out dressed as a football what player. What a cock tease. I thought Jim Ross was coming yeah. back. No one even pretended to care. Until Mark Henry came out and squashed him in two seconds. Yeah, okay. Mark Henry's back. Cool. You're not going to do anything with him, though, are you? Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. So we're backstage with the Fisted Asshole Army, and they're whoring out WWE's newest movie. That's every reason why you shouldn't buy the new movie. If this enticed you in any way to buy the movie, you should kill yourself. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so spots. It's announced that next Monday is Hogan's birthday, so they're going to do a birthday special with all sorts of guests. Let me guess, it's going to be Ted DiBiase, IRS, Ric Flair, Sergeant Slaughter, the usual bunch of old guys you bring back. Dusty Rhodes will be there. Dusty Rhodes will be there, and they'll do that segment where he sees Team Shit, and he goes, Boy, I got a weird family. Because they, they, don't, they, don't, they never do that, right? <laughs> They've never done that before. So then, Dean Ambrose showed up! He was on TV! Wow! What a novel idea. Put the best guy on the roster on TV. Wow. He's fighting Del Rio in a beat the clock challenge. Probably out. So Ambrose. If Ambrose gets a better time in his match than Rollins does in his match, he gets to choose the stipulation for their match at Summerfest. The Summerfest pay-per-view, John. <sighs> this match was awesome. It was. Thoroughly enjoyed this match. Oh yeah, yeah, Ambrose, stop! No, no, they didn't do that, though. They were talking about why you should buy the network for nine ninety nine a month. Call a fucking match, asshole. Yeah. This was a good match, though. A lot of cool spots. Yeah, Ambrose did a tornado DDT off the top rope that was cooler than Daniel Bryan's entire career. And then Daniel uh, Del Rio did this move off the top. I can't talk tonight. Top rope. I don't even know what to call it. I asked people in the Facebook thread, what the fuck is this move? Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. And someone told me to call it the burrito. <laughs> so... Del Rio did the burrito to Dean Ambrose. It was fucking awesome. But Del Rio won with Dirty Deeds, John. Uh, Ambrose won. What did I say? Del Rio. Okay. <laughs> Ambrose won with Dirty Deeds in 15 minutes and 42 seconds. This match was really good. I really liked it. I really liked this match. And the difference between this and a TNA match is this match was 15 minutes and 42 seconds, whereas TNA matches average about to be 3 minutes and 50 seconds, usually. And the reason we're bringing up TNA is because we have a feud going on right now with Sean Polson. It's not really a feud. It's it's, it's not. We kind of we won. He's buried. We we did the John Cena treatment on him. We just completely buried him. But that's entirely besides the point. We get another recap of the Clitic calamity after the match. It's not epic. No one cares. But guess what? Free Balor, take it, John. Free Balor, take it, John. Did you see that match between Ambrose and Del Rio? That was pretty good. But Free Balor, take it, John. And you can see you buy even more tickets if you buy the network for nine ninety nine a month, John. And to go into that night, you're kidding me. So that happened. Uh, Rusev and Lana came out, and then they went to commercial. And then when they came back from commercial, it was announced that Rusev had just squashed Hunico on the WWAF, John. This never gets old, does it? You want to watch wrestling, you go in, you tune in every fucking Monday, and they finish matches on the net, uh, on the app. Not even finish, they do the whole fucking thing on there. Right. 
Did they forget that they were supposed to be whoring out the network tonight? What's with the app? You know, I mean... The th you had a segment on here that was probably longer than Rusev vs. Hunico, which was Adam Rose whoring out a movie. Put that on the app <laughs> and show the wrestling match that took place with the person who's so far beyond over it's not even funny. Maybe you could do that, you know? But it's like 12 million people already downloaded the fucking app. How many more do they want to download it? At least they didn't cut out Lana's promo, which was great. She put up a picture of Obama that made him look like a pussy. And she started making fun of him. She and sang. She sang happy birthday to him in Russian because I guess it's his birthday. Fuck you, Obama. Maybe you'll choke. Oh, we don't want to kill the president. I'm sorry. We love the president. Please don't bomb our house with a drone. <laughs> so then Swagger and Coulter came out, and Lana was cursing at Coulter in Russian, and then he told her to... Sh he said, shut up, Natasha! That's racist. Not all Russian women are named Natasha, you know. That's really insensitive to all the Russian viewers of Dev Dev E. The soccer moms are going to be writing in. They're vodka moms. Uh, he cut an awesome promo talking about America, the little guy, the military... All that good shit, huge reactions and whatnot. And then Rusev beat up Swagger with the flag. Good segment. I give it a... But what's a flag match? They're going to do it at SummerSlam. What is a flag match? I don't know. Can they, like, explain that? They won't explain that. What's a flag match? Do you just beat each other with flags? <laughs> Hardcore action, Mago! Now I give this segment a B plus out of 10. That doesn't make any sense, but let's go with it. And what do you got an A plus out of 10? Because that makes even less sense. But they didn't show the match. They had to show it on the app. Which no one will ever download. You're not enticing people to want to download the app. You're just enticing them to want to jump through the screen and choke your announcers to death. I don't know why it's their fault, but they're so terrible at everything they do. Like, when Michael Cole is there, I'm just hoping that he just gets cancer and dies on the screen before he can say anything. Because I can't stand his fucking voice. <laughs> What's going on, John? Oh, yeah, 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 uh, Swagger, look out! <laughs> they showed a clip of them on uh, main event or SmackDown. Swagger got him in the Patriot log. Cole's like, oh, he got the foot! He got the foot! He got the foot! He got the foot! He got the... <laughs> Why do you have to keep... <laughs> Can you just get cancer, please? <laughs> no, he rise above cancer. You rise above it. He bought a cancer towel, Sination. <laughs> I summed it myself with the tears of dying open sonation. And some of Chastity Lynn's pubic hair. <laughs> yeah, so we get more network whoring after the match. Like, you. <laughs> during matches. If no one matches, bought it by now, they're not going to buy the network ever. Really? I mean, I get that you're in dire straits. I get it. I understand. I feel sorry for you. But you're making people not want the network. <laughs> You could, you know how you put up a little, when something's trending? Just put up a little thing that says buy the network. Don't have these fucking intolerable chodes tell you to buy it. <laughs> okay? I wouldn't buy anything they recommended. Oh, man. I swear to God, I wouldn't buy anything that they recommended. Michael Cole, he's like the freaking sex ed teacher that tells you not to do drugs and to use a condom. Um, when you're having oral sex, make sure you use a dental dam, John. Of course, because anytime you want to eat out a chick, I know every man in America wants to put saran wrap around their mouth. <laughs> like, he's the type that would tell you to do he's that. He's the type who would and do then that. no one will do it. No, but he's the type who would do that, though. I can see he's, he's on a date. He finds some dish rag whore that he has to pay for sex because he can't get it anywhere else. He gets her there, and he's like, oh, I'll be right back to eat out your pussy there, John. He goes to the bathroom, and all the girls, the girl's sitting there, and she's just, she's waiting. And he comes out with the whole thing on his face. <laughs> she hears, like, saran wrap in the fucking bathroom, and he comes out with it all over. He's like, all right there, Chad. <laughs> Don't be a fool. Wrap your tool, John. You're only 9 And then months. she just looks at him, and she kicks him in the balls and walks out. And then he's like, ah! Oh, 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 she's going to kick me. Look out, look out. Oh, swagger, look out. And then he proceeds to do summer commentary. Like, I think I'm hurt. I think I'm hurt. Uh, Michael Cole's like the anti-salesman. <laughs> Please just get cancer. Please. No one's gonna buy the network with him selling it. Why don't you bring back JR? JR would be great at selling the network. They're fruity! They're fruity! Oh god, they're fruity! Skittles! He, he, he made Skittles sound awesome! He, imagine what he could do for your network. 
So Ziggler, for, here's where the show officially it reached the point of no return right here. I can deal with things happening on the app when the segment afterwards is a great promo off between two of the best talkers in the company, but when something this shitty happens, <laughs> it's Ziggler versus Cesaro with The Miz on commentary. Say it with me, folks. <laughs> fake, 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 fake. Ziggler beats Cesaro in two minutes. With a zigzag, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're having like a stare down, and the fans are chanting, You can't wrestle. <laughs> Ziggler's over as fuck! Ziggler's over as fuck! <laughs> Their match on that Raw was fucking awesome! The Miz is putting on great matches! He should be in the title picture! Fuck that Jobber Reigns! No one thinks like you! The moneymaker is <laughs> okay. Uh, so. They're standing there getting showered with you can't wrestle chance. Can you get two more androgynous assholes? <laughs> Ziggler fakes kicking Miz in the head and then walks away making a dumb face. And Cole goes, oh, I think there's a little bit of mind games going on there, John. We got mind games. Miz doesn't want to get raped by this fucking guy. <laughs> Every week he just mounts people in the ring. He grabs them from... <laughs> 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 His shirt says, pull this off. <laughs> what a fucking retard. <laughs> So we get a page interview, her face is on the screen, which means that the show just got better. And she's talking about how she likes AJ and hopes she gets better, and she's mad at Purdy. And that was that. <laughs> it's announced that Team Shit will be on next. So you Bizarre. put a screen up that says, change the channel at this time <laughs> because no one gives a fuck about these two jobbers who can't get a reaction no matter how hard they try. I don't know that would that would have been a lot of text to put on the screen, but it's less misleading than trying to convince us that a match is going to happen, because, you know, match kind of implies that there will be some kind of fan reaction. So it's Rybaxel versus Team Shit again, 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 again. Why? Why? Ryback's hilarious. Ryback is hilarious, but Team Shit wins in two seconds. Homo erotic bizarre. Stardust is like doing cartwheels and shit and crawling around like a freaking. They once again did the classic Cody Rhodes hot tag where he gets tagged in and in a high level situation people. and the fans do nothing. They do absolutely nothing whatsoever. Bizarre, the cosmic what bizarre? key. What bizarre, the cosmic key. Oh, God, cosmic, cosmic, cosmic. What are they searching for? Oh, yeah, they got a cosmic key, John. They're searching for a cosmic key. I guess what do you that's think what it is? I have no idea. It's probably... Uh, Ziggler's dick? Yeah. Or what are those fleshlights for men? Like like the gay ones that are like of an anus? What are they called? Like <laughs> flesh jacks? It's probably like a John Cena model flesh jack that they're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I give that to children. <laughs> That's what John Cena does. That, he goes to make a wish. Everyone who he grants a wish for gets a complimentary Cena flesh jack. <laughs> Here's a molding of my anus nation. <laughs> stick your tongue, stick your fingers, stick your little boy penis in this nation. I love the children. Cena love the children a little too much. We're getting into Uncle Paul territory with this shit now. <laughs> hey, little boy, you want to kiss the magic onions there? It's full of candy. <laughs> sure. sure. Okay, so the authority are in the back, and then Kane walks over to them, and he takes his mask off and walks away. Now he's not the demon in Kane, now he's corporate Kane and again. And JBL starts screaming, Oh, did you see that? Kane took his mask off, Michael, what's going on, Michael? Oh, yeah, yeah, he took his mask off. What's going on, Michael? Yeah, yeah. We've seen this already. How many times has Kane been repackaged with the mask? 88, I can think of, offhand. Why is why is JBL trying to sell this as like the greatest moment ever? Why? Can you imagine if these fucking retards were baseball announcers and like people are hitting grand slams and they're just not saying anything? Oh wow, look at that! But then someone will get like a like a bloop single. Oh my god, he had a bloop single, John. So Jericho versus Luke Harper. Nobody cares about this anymore. If Jericho wins, Harper and Rowan will be banned from ringside. Why does Jericho need them banned from ringside when he won clean last time they fought with them at ringside? Why does he need this great advantage? What kind of advantage is that? It's like the two jobbers who can't beat anybody 
won't be at this ringside. This is such a dead feud. This is such a dead character. It's very sad, because they're all great in the ring, all three of them. And like in the middle of the match, the freaking sheep pops on the screen. And once again, the announcers were shocked. They go, oh, what's happening? What, what's going on, Jordan? I can't see anything. And then, then when it, the lights come on and Wyatt's outside the ring, they Cole, wait, no, they... no, Cole goes, oh, it's Wyatt. He's like a freaking, like, the crocodile hunter stalking some kind of animal. Oh, no. crocky. It's, the, it's Wyatt. The lights came on and he was there and they waited like 10 seconds and then he was just like, Bray Wyatt. It's like, yeah, we see him, you fucking doofus. It's like, really? It's Bray Wyatt? I think Bray Wyatt's going to buy the network, John. Oh, you hear it's only nine ninety month. <laughs> nine ninety nine a month, Michael. <clears throat> so he will goes in the ring and punches Jericho, meaning that he just made it so that Harper and Rowan won't be there. Because that helps him, I guess. I don't know. No one cares. He's a nothing. He can't win. And even if he beats Jericho, who cares? He lost to him already. Does that mean this is going to continue? No, we don't know why Bray Wyatt's stalking Chris Jericho there, John. He's a false prophet, Michael. The movement is, uh, I'm afraid the movement is spreading. Yeah. So, the summer of Diego continues, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, this is it. It's hashtag Diego time. It's Diego's time, folks. <laughs> he's gonna win every fucking match he's gonna be in for the rest of his career. He's gonna win the Rumble. He's gonna fucking do something epic at every pay-per-view. And then, finally, it's gonna come. WrestleMania 31. He's gonna beat Eeyore for the title. Mark my words. Summer Diego. Uh, he comes out with the postmenopausal cunt and Summer, whatever her name is. And Fandango came out with a bald, half naked hornswoggle. <laughs> that was so fucking weird. Why is this still happening? I can't even scream about it anymore because I, I'm just, I've accepted that this is going to happen. Every, we're going to get Raw 2000 and they're still going to be doing it's this. It's still happening. No one has ever been interested. But there's no end in sight. It's still, it's like Chavo fighting Hornswoggle. It's just, it's not ending. It's still happening. Diego wins. Is anyone shocked? Hornswoggle decides instead of dancing with Fandango, he should, should dance with the postmenopausal cunt and the other midget and Diego because he knows Diego is the next big thing. <laughs> this is still happening, folks. It's either the summer of Diego is a real thing, or they 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 really they think this is entertaining. They think that we want to see this. Oh, you go back and watch WWE every week. There were three amazing segments in a row tonight. You know, <laughs> that's why we come back. We don't come back for this. We can barely tolerate it because we know there's good shit happening. All right, all right, hey, motherfucker. <sighs> so backstage with Orton and Renee, Orton shows a video package of him punching Roman Reigns, even though they were in the locker room. So I don't know how he or Renee saw the video package <laughs> he wanted to show. He's like, Renee, I have a video I want to show, and then they came on, but I don't know how they saw it. And then he says he's going to punch Roman Reigns at Summerfest. At the Summerfest pay-per-view, John. Only on the WWE Network, man. Did you know that the WWE Network's only $9.99 a month, Michael? Oh, man, that's a great deal. That's less than I spend on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bo Dallas vs. R-Truth. Bo mm -hmm. Dallas won. R-Truth tried to punch him after the match. People know the deal, what's up? See them team king there. What's up? What's up? And then Bo Dallas punched him harder, and then the segment ended. No brown people tonight. They Where were, were they? Found. We'll let you know why we're here. Well, you know what? We want you to know. They were in Texas. They're black. Texans maybe they don't like black people. Maybe. Is that a thing? Anyone from Texas out there? How do you feel about African Americans? So, this hasn't happened in quite a while, ladies and gentlemen. There was 20 minutes of nothing that followed. And I wrote down segment by segment what it was. Commercial! More network whoring. A pointless, stupid Wyatt promo that no one gave a shit about because everyone stopped caring about him since he got buried. More network whoring after the promo. They show the same 20-minute Lesnar Cena video again. With Literally the, the same thing. Blood, urine, and vomit. Okay. You showed that already. I'm here every night. Les is not. But where am I tonight? I'm here every week. I never late. I never holiday. Never take a break. Never brush your mouth for Colgate's nation. 
Maybe he was granting wishes and handing out flesh jacks. <laughs> so, uh, Rollins versus RVD in the beat the clock thing, but it's announced that RVD will not be his opponent. Instead, it will be Heath Slater. Slater Gator! In a true Shannon Moore moment. You know what we're talking about with that? Shannon Leave Moore. a comment if you know what we mean by Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore! So, um, Ambrose shows up. He rips up Rollins' money in the bank contract, and I thought... Wouldn't it be great for Ambrose's character if he went in the ring, beat the shit out of Heath Slater so Rollins loses and then left? That would be awesome. That would have been awesome, but no. Instead, G-rated Alicia Fox antics have to take place where he pours popcorn all over the briefcase and stuffs JBL's hat into it. And off the distraction, because somehow that's hardly distracting, fucking Heath Slater rolls up Rollins and wins. Of all the, the people to, to turn a few into G-rated drivel, Rollins versus Ambrose? Gotta turn this into a Simba-esque G-rated garbage fuck? Why? So, we get more network whoring after that. <clears throat> we get even more network whoring after that. Please buy the network! Okay, this hurts to talk about. This hurts. Because in the main event, for the second week in a row, Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella talk. <sighs> Stephanie McMahon was dressed like a slutty Dixie Carter tonight. But her tits are still covered up. Right. She will never see them again. Fucking... There was like a vein popping out, like... <laughs> what the fuck? No, but this... Who are they trying to entertain with this? The WWE Universe. I know Smarks probably love it because they fantasize about fucking Daniel Bryan and lo and behold, his wifey oh, is in the ring. With her Jorgen von Strangled jaw. Brie Bella, the toughest belly in the universe! I can't even scream because I'm exhausted from having to sit through this, but it's not entertaining. It's really not. It's not fun to watch. It's a struggle to sit through, ladies and gentlemen. Can you put this shit in, like, the middle of the show and save Ambrose vs. Del Rio, which was, like, a great match for the main event? Have Rusev and Swagger be the main event? Have the fucking last man standing match be the main event? No, let's have this be the main event, because I get that you can't do Lesnar Cena because they're not there, but of all the things to pick to replace it in the main event, Brie Bella and Stephanie McMahon... The two shittiest actors in the company. I quit! Yeah, she had a new one today. She said, uh, You're a piece of trash! <laughs> Whatever. They signed the contract. Stephanie hits Nikki Bella in the head with the contract while Triple H pushes the desk into the corner and starts raping Brie Bella in the corner. <laughs> uh, she slaps Triple H in his giant nose. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie... Pedigrees or and says I'm gonna win at Summerfest. And it was a, a really, a really good 90-minute stretch where I thought maybe this Raw will be awesome the whole way through, but it wasn't. It turned into a, a giant festering pile of steaming goat shit, akin to last week's Raw, which was the worst Raw of all time. I have exhausted my screaming efforts, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man. Oh, that's alright, because Stardust is over as fuck! Stardust is over as far! Far! <laughs> and you know what sucks about this? Our next video is going to be praising WWE. 50 reasons why the current WWE is good, and 50 reasons why TNA as a whole is complete and utter, unforgivable, unbearable, intolerable dog shit. That will be the title of the video, it will be that long. And I forgot it already, so forget that. Fuck Cody Rhodes.